Welcome. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You know, folks, the... Um... Ed Sullivan Theater here is a Broadway theater, um, but this is a late-night comedy show, so if anyone here was expecting to see The Lion King, uh... <laughs> I'm sure you're upset, but, uh, Hakuna Matubad. <laughs> and even though this is a late-night comedy show, we try to talk about what people are talking about every day. And today, I'm sure you know, what everybody's talking about is horrible and familiar and horrible because it is so familiar. Yesterday, there was yet another school shooting, this time in Nashville, and it's impossible not to read this news or see any of the footage without being heartbroken for all those people and for our beautiful country, because this is the 130th mass shooting of 2023, and 2023 is only 87 days old. Not doing anything about this is an insane dereliction of our collective humanity. Woo! And the obvious solution here is one President Biden has proposed, an assault weapons ban. Mm. We've had one before, from 1994 to 2004, and it worked. During that ban, the risk of dying in a mass shooting was 70% lower than it is today. That just makes sense. Yeah. Fewer guns equals fewer shootings. It's the same reason. <laughs> it's not complicated. It's not complicated. It might be hard, but it's not complicated. That's just math. It's the same reason these days we have fewer strangulations with a landline. <laughs> it's just, it's a simple common sense idea that Republicans are desperate to talk about anything else. Take congressman and guy on the sexual harassment training Zoom <laughs> who's about to unmute and explain that the girl in scenario B overreacted because, if anything, the warehouse guys were giving her a compliment. Tim Burchett. <laughs> Burchett opposes doing an assault weapons ban and apparently doing anything else. Here's what the congressman said about the shooting. It's a horrible, horrible situation, and we're not going to fix it. Criminals are going to be criminals. Yes, I suppose, I suppose, as a lawmaker, he could, I don't know, make a law, but that sounds like a lot of work. Despair, <laughs> despair is so much more efficient. It reminds me of that sign on the subway. If you see something, whatevs, bomber's going to bomb. <laughs> Here's the next thing he said. My daddy fought in the Second World War, fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese, and he told me, he said, buddy, he said, if somebody wants to take you out and doesn't mind losing their life, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. Counterpoint, elementary school is not supposed to be like World War II. <laughs> Come on. That... <laughs> That's why you never hear, uh, attention students, it's Tuesday, that means Sloppy Joe's for lunch and for recess, we're storming Iwo Jima. Now, one guest on Fox News who is speaking under footage here uh, said this. That seems to be a common pattern in many of these shootings. Hmm. What could that that be that she's referring to? That one piece of equipment involved in every mass shooting. For no reason, I'm going to drink this glass of water while she says what that is. A side door. <laughs> <laughs> really? A side door. That, that's the problem. Wow. Okay. Soon, that uh, desperate hunk of bull crap was spread all over Fox News. The fact that this person could go through a side door um, means that security needs to be taken more seriously. If this door, uh, it, 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 even if it was another door, a side door uh, was open and accessible. Close and lock the damn door. <laughs> Period. Yes, clearly, we need common sense door reform. But, <laughs> folks, we can't stop at side doors. Did you know that most people enter a building at the front door? So, we clearly need to get rid of those, too. And here's how it'll work. On the first day of kindergarten, you drop your kids off at school, kiss them goodbye, then they just brick up the entrance. <laughs> one tube in for food, one tube out for waste. Twelve years later, we bust down the wall, Kool-Aid man style, <laughs> give them their diplomas, and then, and only then, inform them there was once this thing called slavery and that gay people exist. <laughs> they can't learn that in school. It's far too dangerous. <laughs> now... Oh, yeah! yeah. Another tragedy Republicans refuse to do anything about, the former president. 
He's in a whole mess of trouble, including right here in Manhattan, where he's facing indictment for illegal campaign contributions and covering up the Stormy Daniels affair. And yesterday, we got uh, a new twist involving former National Enquirer publisher and dentist explaining that while you're out, someone stole all your teeth, David Pecker. <laughs> and like always, it's never good when the Pecker unexpectedly pops up. <laughs> he already testified in this, the Stormy case, but something spicy must be going on because yesterday, Pecker testified again in the hush money inquiry or as the National Enquirer reported it, bombshell, Harry cheats on Meghan with Batboy. <laughs> so, why is Pecker even involved? Well, the guy is known for helping the former prez quash embarrassing gossip by paying for exclusive rights to someone's story with no intention of publishing it, a practice they call catch and kill. Catch and kill, of course, also the less popular cousins of Snap, Crackle, and Pop. <laughs> <laughs> now, with the walls, with the indictment walls closing in, last night the ex-president sat down with his buddy, conservative pundit, and the first thing Fox News viewers see when they die, Sean Hannity. <laughs> He's waiting. He's, He's on the other side. <laughs> Hannity asked the former president about his Truth Social post from the weekend, where he put up this threatening photo of himself wielding a baseball bat next to a photo of Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's head. It seems ominous. But not if you ask the guy holding the bat. You have to understand that when the story was put up, I put up a story. We didn't see pictures. And they put up a picture of me. And you know where I was holding the baseball bat? It was at the White House. Make America, buy America, because I did a lot of buy America things. And this is a company that makes baseball bats. Then they put next to that picture a picture mm -hmm. of Alvin Bragg. I didn't do it. They did it. The the. I guess the people that do the paper or somebody put pictures together. After that rambling explanation, I think I have a pretty good idea of who got hit in the head with a bat. <laughs> Hannity also asked the former president about the FBI's investigation into his mishandling of classified records and desperately tried to give him an escape route. I can't imagine you ever saying, um, bring me some of the boxes that we brought back from the White House. I'd like to look at them. Did you ever do that? I would have the right to do that. There's nothing wrong with but it. But I know you. I don't think you would do well, it. Well, I don't have a lot of time, but I would have the right to do that. Right. I would do that. There'd be All right, let me wrong. move on. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, objection, Your Honor, leading the witness and somehow failing to do that. <laughs> the witness not realize I'm trying to lead him now. <laughs> of course, besides his day job as defendant, a uh, former president has a side hustle running to be the next president in 2024. And according to leaks, his campaign is warning potential DeSantis staffers they won't be hired to work for the former president. Take that. DeSantis employees, if you go work for Ron, you might never get the chance to go to prison, be disbarred, or destroy your legacy as an American hero in front of a dildo store. Wow. Dildo store. <laughs> Fixes everything. <laughs> I could say any sentence and end it with the words, dildo store. <laughs> or get a laugh. Reportedly, this rule came after the ex-prez lost several staffers to a DeSantis super PAC, including a top communications aide named Matt Wolking, who tweeted yesterday that, with DeSantis as president, we will finally be able to win so much that we'll be tired of all the winning. <laughs> what? Tired of all the winning? I can see why the ex-president is pissed. They're stealing all his best lines. <laughs> that explains the governor's new slogan, DeSantis 2024, I guess the people that do the paper or somebody put pictures together. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Mary J. Wise and Cook.